finding ways to turn those questions about the origin of life into testable scientific hypotheses. Simulation experiments cannot tell us exactly how life formed in the past, but if enough of them are done, they could eventually tell us if it's possible for life to emerge from chemistry. I'm John Perry, and that's the Miller-Urey experiment stated clearly. This video was funded by the Center for Chemical Evolution, the National Science Foundation, and NASA. Special thanks to chemist Eric Parker. He volunteered hours of his time going over our script, sending us scientific papers, and critiquing our visuals for this animation. Though we do receive grants from time to time, Stated Clearly is made possible with financial contributions from viewers like you. To support us, visit our website at statedclearly.com and click Contribute. Louis Pasteur's swan neck flask experiment in 1859 showed that microbes needed to be present for decay to occur. Pasteur placed nutrient broth in long neck flasks, then bent some of the necks into an S shape, hence the name swan neck. The broth was boiled, killing any microbes that may have been present. Then he allowed the flasks with the sterile broth to sit undisturbed. Pasteur found that the broth in the normal neck flask became cloudy and was found to contain microbes such as bacteria and mould. The broth in the swan neck flask did not change as particles in the air were prevented from landing on the broth due to the shape of the flask neck. This showed that microbes don't appear due to spontaneous generation. Instead, they enter the flask with the air on dust and other particles and multiplied in the broth. The aim of this investigation is to model Pasteur's experiment. Before starting, complete a risk assessment of the investigation. Chicken stock will be used as the nutrient broth and conical flasks will be used as the vessels. Pour 250 ml of chicken stock into each of the flasks. Each of the flasks will be boiled for 15 minutes to destroy any microbes that may be present in the stock. Seal two of the flasks with stoppers to model Pasteur's swan neck flask that prevented airborne particles from entering. Leave the other two flasks open to the air. Write a description of the contents of the flasks. The flasks are placed in an area where they can remain undisturbed for a number of days. Like all models, this investigation has its limitations. Pasteur's swan neck flask still allowed for the passage of air, whereas our flasks are stoppered to prevent air from entering. In this investigation, the independent variable is access to the air, which may contain microbes. The dependent variable is microbial growth in the form of colour change and clarity of the stock. Variables that have been controlled are the same type and amount of stock is used in each flask, the flasks are boiled for the same length of time, and the flasks are left undisturbed in the same area. The flasks were left to stand undisturbed for a number of days. When we examine the flasks, we can see the stock in the flasks that were open to the airborne particles have become cloudy when compared to the stock in the flask that was stoppered.
This indicates the presence of microbes and can be confirmed by plating out some of the cloudy stock on agar plates. Describe the results in the table. Since both flasks were boiled, the microbial growth in the stock of the open flasks must have been caused by microbes that entered the flasks after the boiling process. Thus, microbes must have entered the flasks from the environment. The results obtained by modelling Pasteur's experiment support his theory that microbes were needed for decay. Pasteur's experiment was repeated multiple times by many scientists, and each time the results were similar, supporting the germ theory of disease. Pasteur demonstrated the link between germs, decay and disease, and showed that microbes were not the product of disease and decay, but rather the cause. Who's ready to hatch some cool pets? Click here to make your very own monster on Adapted Mind, where monsters teach you math. Okay, good morning class. So we will be starting our first lesson for this semester, which is module one for general biology one. So ang topic natin ngayon is uh, all about the cell theory. Meron tayo yung about sa origin of life, um, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So what's the difference between the two and ano yung um, the mains in life that they are in. So that's what we will be talking about today. So ang um, mga hindi makapasok today, which is only 100 lang tayo kasi ang pwedeng pumasok. So the rest will be accessing via YouTube na lang ang papasokan ng lahat. Then I will have a short announcement later about ano yung activity tomorrow sa inyo, then meron din sa parents ninyo later sa afternoon. Okay, so we'll start with our lesson. So the first thing that, that you have to do is ita, uh, i, i, maging katabi muna ninyo yung inyong mga module. Tapos, go, ano, uh, you follow our lesson through your modules. If you have your textbook, you can find in your table of contents or in the index na portion of your textbook saan ang topic na ito. Okay, so, but the cell theory actually class is not in the book. Um, kahit yung sa soft copy, kasi yung soft copy ng book is actually the same lang yan siya, adapted lang in the Philippines. Konti lang yung nadagdag nila as in uh, short paragraphs only. So, better pa na i-download nyo na lang yung book, na ang, yung soft copy niya. Okay, so let's start with, ano yung cell theory? So, uh, most of you have already discussed about the cell in your junior high school. Um, lahat, lahat kayo dumaan din naman ang junior high school. So, na-discuss na ninyo ano yung cell? Ano yung kanyang uh, meron, uh, ano yung nasa kanya? Ano yung use ng cell? Ano yung meaning ng magkaroon ng cell? <laughs> Um, lahat ng yun is part and parcel of um, junior high school and elementary education for science. So, lahat kayo din, dahil sa first ito siya na lesson, you will have to jump right into ano yung mga theories regarding the cell. Uh, the cell wasn't really, hindi siya kaagad-agad 
na oh we just discovered it like this like that actually before na, na discover siya there were already theories about it ano yung gamit niya para saan siya yun siya ang ano ng postulates of the cell theory so we have three postulates actually that we will be going to understand today so meron tayong tat uh, tatlo and there were three proponents that were um, credited to it so may tatlo tayo but uh, the other two were parang sila yung parang sa ano sa halos isa pero they have separate uh, ideas for it kasi meron tayo yung plants animals then we have the um, other living things so dahil sa noong unang panahon kung ano lang yung makikita yun lang din ang ang iniisip nila na yun lang ang hayop at tanim sa sa buong ano sanlibutan at choose so ganun siya so we have um for this one we will be discussing saan nanggaling yung mga theories nila paano siya na develop right so ano yung oh, mag-start muna tayo kung ano muna yung mga characteristics ng isang living organism remember that this is the subject biology so by bio means life and uh logos uh the logic is from the logos na latin na term it means study so it's the study of life so paano mo siya ma-distinguish as a living organism ano yung characteristics ng isang living organism so that's the first thing that you have to um understand sa inyong mga modules, which is the first na task na nandyan. Although na hindi yan sa inyo ipapasagutan kasi may sagot na yan siya sa likod. So, ano yung mag nagiging characteristic ng isang living organism? And another question that you have to answer is that how do you know that it is a living organism? So, bakit hindi natin tinoconsider ang mga viruses as living organism but we consider the bacteria as a living organism. Bakit tatawagin natin living organism ang isang plant, ang isang animal, ang isang human, ang isang orangutan, but we don't consider the viruses as a living organism, although they can infect others, just like your bacteria. So, bakit hindi siya considered? So, we will be discussing that first. So, here are the main na characteristics of life. The, there are different ideas for the characteristics of life but this is the main na uh, ideas about it so the first one is actually meron tayo yung um, the ability to gather and use energy by um, nutrient uptake and processing so halimbawa if you are uh, uh, you are a living organism because you can create your own energy or you can generate energy in the form of ATP or for other na mga processes you use GTP uh we discussed na yan natin sa second um second na quarter yung GDP uh GTP and ATP ano yung difference ng dalawa okay Another thing is that hindi uh, just like meron tayong autotrophs and we have all the heterotrophs. So meron din tayong organisms that can um, create, um, get energy from wastes. So meron tayong ganyan. So mainly meron tayong auto. Auto means self. That means they can generate energy by their themselves just like yung plants natin. Only the ones that have chloroplasts are ang um, makakaya ng ganyan. They can generate energy by themselves. But those that have mitochondria alone, so mitochondrion lang yung ano nila nasa kanilang cells, those are the ones that can, that needs to process energy, get energy from another living organism. So just like your um, bacteria, your humans, your animals, so those are the organisms that would be your protists. So those are the organisms that can that will need to in uh, um, get nutrients from others. So kaya sila hetero hetero because it's from another organism that they get their um, energy. Another is we have number two maintaining internal balance by excretion and homeostasis. 
So, pag sinabi mong homeostasis, which is quarter four yun siya na, natin na lesson for biology, when you say homeostasis, it means balance. So, uh, you maintain balance by halimbawa for, uh, for humans uh, or animals, we maintain it by um, in uh, taking in air and ano kinukuha natin sa air na iyon yung oxygen and we take out pinapalabas natin is carbon dioxide so we make a balance between the two uh, usually it's a biochemical balance so we will be having a lesson about that so meron tayo yung ano uh, biochemical na balance for that another is yung sinasabing excretion excretion is we have the sodium the potassium the um, other na mga um, um, excretory na products natin, like the urea, yung nagpapaamoy uh, sa inyong mga ihi. You have also the bilirub uh, bilirubin. We have the byproducts of ano, red blood cell na production. So, yun siya. They are part and parcel of a uh, living organism. So, kapag kaya mo magbalanse ng ganyan, that means you are a living organism. Another thing is you have third, which is responding to stimuli. You aren't a living organism kung hindi ka kayang mag-respond sa anong nasa environment mo. For example, pag sinabi mo, um, you, can feel, you cannot feel touch and you cannot feel anything and you cannot respond to anything, that means you are not alive. Okay, dito na siya actually pumapasok yung viruses. Okay. On its own kasi, the viruses could, could not um, live on its own. Hindi siya kayang, uh, the term is live. Okay. Hindi niya kasi kayang mabuhay na siya lang. Um, unlike the plants that they can produce energy by themselves, si, ano kasi, si virus does not have the machinery to produce energy. None talaga siya. As in, nada, nil, ganun siya. So, wala talaga siyang other na means. So, number one pa lang, wala na siyang ganun. Another thing is, hindi niya ka, mag-respond lang siya sa stimuli if it already is in the host. So, it's either a bacteria, a bacterium, or a uh, an animal, or a, um, you have a fungal, or you have um, a plant cell. So, kapag andun na siya sa host, saka lang siya talagang alive. Okay. Um, it's quote-unquote na alive. Kasi saka lang siya parang nagre-respond. But on its own, wala siyang response. It's, it's like it's dead and it's just waiting for another host. Ganun ang viruses. Kaya nga yung ano natin, problem natin about uh, this one is the, the, we still have a debate among biologists for this. And sa, ano din, sa taxonomy, uh, sa systematics, they have a different um, um, phylogeny for this one. Meron silang different branch of, or, uh, of this one. Kasi they are not part of the branch of life, yung mga branches of living organisms. Wala siya doon. Kahit hanapin mo pa yun siya class, mga different mga examples, wala talaga yun silang viruses. Kaya nga sila yung pinaka-misunderstood na organisms on earth. Okay, so that's part of them. They only respond to stimuli if they are already in their host, which is not like the autotrophs like our plants. Okay, so another thing is that Number four, they um, living organisms can adapt and evolve. So, halimbawa, meron tayo ang pinaka ano kasi ng, na term na ano is evolve. Yung pag sinabi mo kasi evolve, that means you respond quite well to your environment. Um, so well that you actually create another version of yourself for the environment. Now, which is quite unlike sa iyong natural talaga na expected of you. For example, other organisms, because they have, um, um, they live in environments that are 
mag, uh, yung biomes nila are actually very cold. Uh, they have very long winters. So, uh, other organisms tend to hibernate. Okay. Hibernation is actually an evolutionary adaptation. So, ang, ang meaning yun is that hindi, hin, uh, they have to hibernate because they cannot live uh, with, uh, no, uh, during winter. So, kailangan nila matulog muna for an entire time. The rest of their um, organs, the rest of their uh, metabolic na processes has to be put on sleep. Para siyang yung laptop mo na nilagay mo to sleep na parang very low lang siya. Um, it doesn't need a lot of energy, pero it's still running. Ganon. So, it's like that. Ang ganun ang, ang hibernation sa kanila. And, and that's an evolutionary adaptation. Another thing is the mating calls. Yung organisms have their own mating calls. Uh, humans have their own, uh, the gorillas and the chimpanzees and orangutans have their own, which is nasa ano kasi tayo, uh, the same tayo na order na primata. So, ang ibig sabihin, magka, magka ano kayo, magka, magkaka, pa, magkaka ano tayong lahat. Um, magkakapareho tayo ng ano order, but, we are de quite different from one another. I ano pa rin tayo, magkakaiba pa rin tayo ng evolutionary adaptation regarding our mating calls. The same as sa ano yung sa mga um, birds and we have for other na mga, um, we have for other na mga like seals. So they have a different na, ano, na um, adaptation to the environment. Another thing is we have irritability. Irritability is almost the same to responding to stimuli. Except that when you say responding to stimuli class, it's that you just respond to anything that the environment gives you. Pero irritability kasi class is just, um, it's a part of um, survival na mechanism, ang irritability. Whereas yung uh, responding to stimuli, it's just the natural metabolic processes lang siya ang kanyang minimin. Okay? So, those are examples of another characteristic of a uh, living organism. And the last one is we have reproduction. So, kapag sinabi mong the organism does, is not able to reproduce on its own just like the viruses, uh, viruses kasi they have to hack their um, yung ano nila host na machinery just to use it for the reproduction of themselves. So, hindi sila, they aren't capable of reproducing by themselves. Yun ang pinaka another na, na naman na parang a point against them. Kas, kaya sila hindi living organism. Kasi they do not use themselves. They just use their host mechanism for, um, ano, for for reproduction. So, kaya nga, the term for viruses is we have the term biohackers. Kaya sila ganun. So, uh, reproduction kasi class is a way to pass down your traits. It's either by meiosis or we have mitosis or we have the binary fission, we have the fragmentation. Okay, uh, magdidiscuss tayo niyan quarter four under reproduction. So, uh, those are the types of um, or ways para mapasa mo ang yung traits mo sa iyong mga um, the next generation uh, producing the progeny okay so ganun siya so the offspring is actually the product of uh, the parents parang ano um parang the uh, yung ano nila ng attempt at survival okay so ganun siya so those are the uh, the characteristics of life. So, meron tayo yung ano, others. Pero these are the um, shortcut na. So, this is from teacher's pet. So, they are made of cells. So, they get energy from the environment. It's um, either they are autotrophs or heterotrophs. Then, they can change with time, which is evolutionary adaptation. You, they can grow and reproduce, which is... Um, you have bimitosis or meiosis or binary fission. 
So we have, um, kung sa bacteria naman, we have another form which is um, conjugation, which is i-discuss natin sa quarter four. Organized parts sila, so that means they have systems of their parts and they can perform chemical reactions, respond to um, environment or stimuli, and maintain homeostasis. So those are the, the other na forms of um, characteristics of life. Depende na kung saan galing ang iyong data. Okay. So, ano yung ano natin kanina? Uh, why do we uh, not consider a virus as a living organism? The first one is they cannot uh, produce energy by their themselves. They also cannot uh, produce um, uh, reproduce by themselves. Hindi din nila kaya Mag, um, for example, yung kanina natin na nasabi na they do not uh, respond to them, their stimuli um, by themselves. Kasi saka lang sila, kapag nakapasok na sila sa kanilang, ano, sa kanilang target na organism or adapted na or organism, saka lang sila parang they start to resemble a living organism. Okay, so that's why we cannot consider them as living organisms. All right, so viruses are not considered living because they are. Um, the main point is actually they cannot reproduce. So A, B, C is actually, meron kasi silang, uh, they are made actually of parang cell-like na, no, na, na parts. They also, uh, they have a parang cell nuclei, but it's like a genetic na re, uh, genetic material na region lang. Pero hindi talaga siya as in nuclei. Uh, they also contain uh, DNA and RNA. So the main point here is reproduction. Okay, so viruses cannot reproduce on their own. All right. So, those are your examples. Okay, let's go to how we organize life. Okay, review lang tayo kasi an, an nasa ano na ninyo ito sa inyong junior and elementary days. Okay, so this one, um, we'll start with organelles. Okay, yung pinaka ano natin ngayon sa quarter one, the first na mga parts of our lessons will be about organelles. Okay, so ano yung mga organelles natin? We have the mitochondrion, we have your um, cell nucleus, we have also the plasma membrane, which is um, an organelle on its own. We have also your endoplasmic reticulum, the rough and the smooth. Okay, so we have the Golgi apparatus. It's not Golgi, it's Golgi. Okay, so we have also your um lysosomes so yun ang mga examples ng ating organelles we will discuss them one by one by next meeting okay number 3 is we have a uh, second one a step to life is those organelles are parts of your cells okay the cell is actually um kung ano pa is always described as the basic unit of life Okay, so cells are yung pinaka ano natin, pinaka um, parang basis as a living organism. Kasi meron tayong mga prokaryotes which are unicellular and we have the eukaryotes which are mainly, mostly, lahat, almost sila except for a few, are multicellular. Okay, you will discover later bakit sinabi kong Lah hindi lahat ng mga eukaryotes are actually multicellular. There are um, uh, um, unicellular eukaryotes. So, meron tayong exception. Okay. The next one is we have yung tissues. Okay. So, tissues are actually um, made up of groups of cells. So, the tissues are, it's either they are arranged as... Wala po audio, ma'am. Okay, nawawala ba ang audio? Sorry. Parang choppy talaga ang ano ngayon. Okay. Well, wala po ang audio.
Mam di kolamin kayu mari ni. Okay, marinig ba or hindi? Okay. So, we have, ang um, ano na kasi natin sa, ano, sa tissues is may marami tayong klase class. So, ang um, ang problem natin sa tissues kasi is that sa sobra nilang dami, hindi natin sila kaya by module 2. So, ang ano na lang is, ilalagay ko siya sa... Uh, sa ating quarter 4 which is mas kailangan niya siya ang topic doon sa tissue. So doon tayo magdi-discuss niyan. Odo na dapat siya i-discuss ngayon na quarter 1, we'll just uh, focus first on uh, your um, ano cells and the organelles and ano yung mga processes inside the cells. So kasi hindi niyo pa kailangan ng tissues, hindi mo na tayo magdi-discuss about tissues here. Okay, the same as for your organis, uh, organs. The organs are actually uh, groups of tissues na naman. So, you will be the, discovering them, all of them, in quarter 4. The topics that we will be discussing here in quarter 1 will be used primarily in quarter 4 natin. Okay, so for quarter 4 yan siya, including the organ systems, all of them. So, we will be discussing them one by one. Okay. Ang kagandahan lang yan, class, dahil sa favorite kong subject, anatomy and physiology, we will be discussing them um, in depth na malalimang usapan yan siya, bawat isa sa kanila. Okay? So, ang next na ano for this one is that there are other forms of organizing life. So, meron tayo yung atom, we have the Molecule, cell, organ, cell, tissue, you have the organ, organ system. Yun lang nasa previous slide. But higher than that, meron pa tayo the whole organism. If there are, um, halimbawa, magkakapareho kayo na species, that's a population. If there are different uh, populations of uh, different species, uh, population in that area, you call that a community. Okay, if the community of organisms, living organisms, is with a community of your non-living organisms, you are finding an ecosystem. So, yan siya ang ecosystem. If an ecosystem is, meron yan siyang different na mga, ano, uh, you have different ecosystems in one area, uh, na a geographical area, you call that a biome. And the whole earth is what we call as a biosphere. So biosphere is just um, pertaining to the environment and the organisms that is for life. Meron tayo yung atmosphere, we have the geosphere, we have the hydrosphere. But those are parts for, na-discuss niyan sa inyo ni Sir Sarah, most likely sa earth science. So those are other nano, but... Here, we just stop into biosphere. Unfortunately, class, gen general biology 1 and 2 is just for hindi siya makaabot sa ecosystem. We just, uh, we cannot touch the ecosystem and the biomes. Uh, hanggang ano lang tayo, um, populations, uh, ganun lang tayo ang ating study. Okay, the, the other, na, ano, they are discussed in ecology for those na magsa-study ng uh, biology in college na. Okay? So, um, another thing is that meron tayong divisions of life. Okay? When we say divisions, 
Okay. Pag sinabi mong divisions of life, we have the domains. Okay. Dati kasi, we have five domains. Um, we have uh, this, uh, fa- um, we have only five domains. Uh, ano pa? Sorry. Five kingdoms pala. Okay. So, we have five kingdoms. Wala na namang audio. Wait lang. Okay. So, meron tayo yung ano, uh, meron tayong three domains of life. Dati is we have only two domains. Uh, we have six, uh, five kingdoms only. Uh, the fifth kingdom was actually uh, Monera. Okay, yan siya ang kanyang classification, Monera. But the problem with it is that, ano tayo class, yung ano niya is that very vague ang kanyang ang kanyang uh, description uh, or parang classification so uh, sa ngayon because we have molecular sequencing um dna sequencing kaya tayo nagkaroon ng tatlong domains of life and a six kingdom na rule so meron tayong six kingdoms today so uh the Ang maganda naman sa ano sa ganito na arrangement is that very uh, madali na lang siya para sa mga um, those that study the systematics of organisms which we will discuss on quarter 3. Okay, so madali na lang ang mag-classify ng organisms ngayon. Okay, so we have three domains of life. We have bacteria yung mga totoong bacteria, the ones that we consider as harmful and not uh, the beneficial ones that yung mga ginagamit natin para sa pagkain, the ones that actually cause diseases, those are the bacteria that we know. So, these are bacteria. And they are prokaryotes. Lahat sila. Okay, another thing is we have the domain archaea. Archaea means that they are very old school. Sila yung pinakamatandang organisms on earth and they are the first life forms. Yan ang tatandaan ha. They are considered as the first life forms and um, they are, ang age nila is actually more than billions years old na sila. Unlike the eukaryotes which actually is part na ng, ano, ng Cambrian explosion, Okay, eukaryotes are already very recently lang yan siya. Millions, hundreds of millions years old lang yan siya, ang, including the humans. Humans are actually um, thousands um, of years old. Mga 60 or 40,000 years. Yan pa lang ang age ng humans. Hindi pa, very recent lang tayo sa um, geographical na time scale sa life. So, ang pinakamatanda actually class and those that can survive very harsh environment. So, yun ang ating domain archaea. So, pinaka-harsh na environment ang, ang archaea because they can survive very salty, very hot, very cold. Doon sila, kaya nila yan. But for domain bacteria class, kaya nga ba pag sinasabing uh, uh, madumi yung pagkain, but if you boil it out thoroughly, like um, rolling na boil, so that means you can kill the bacteria. Na, na, kaya nga, we cook our food. It's because mainly, hindi yan siya para, para sa taste lang or sa lasa lang. It's because you are already trying to kill the bacteria. Okay? So, the third na domain is actually where all the eukaryotes are. Okay. So, meron tayo yung um, the, uh, the main eukarya, which is for our eukaryotes. Meron tayo yung um, for, uh, four kingdoms under this one. The plantae, which are the plants. The animalia, which are the animals. And we have the fungi or the fungi. Okay, those are for your mga other na mga detrivores. Uh, and we have the protists. Anything na hindi mo malagay sa plants, 
hindi mo ma-classify as fungi or fungi or hindi mo ma-classify um, as an animal, you place them into protesta. Sila yung mga protests. O, oh, nagpo-protesta sila kasi hindi nila alam saan sila pupunta. Okay, so ganun ang mga protesta natin. So, they are the ones that we cannot classify as anywhere. Okay, so most likely din, ang ibang protesta, nalalagay na sila sa bacteria archaea. Depende na din kasi uh, very vague kasi ang, ang classification sa protests. And those are um, pinaka um, uh, ripe for studying, especially if you want to study organi um, living organisms. Sila yung pinaka misunderstood kasi the protesta. Okay? So, those are the domains of life and the six kingdoms of living organisms. Okay, so meron tayo yung ano natin, the question again. So, we have a group of individuals of the same species living in the same area. So, what do we call them? So, the answer for this one is you have a population. So, population is same species, same area. Kapag magkakaiba na yan sila na species in the same area, you call them a community. And if you have uh, non-living and living organisms uh, na, uh, in one area, in one environment, you call that an ecosystem. Okay? So, you have this na pwede mong i-arrange, uh, pwede nyo na itong ano, uh, paglaruan later on your own. Right? So another drill question, the smallest unit of biological structure that meets the functional requirements of living is your C, which, C, is, your, which is your cell, okay? So that's your smallest unit that can carry out all the processes of life, right? So paano ba makastudy ng cell? Okay, um, dahil sa busy ang school ngayon at uh, may bisita kasi sila. So, hindi ako maka-virtual tour sa inyo for the laboratory. Actually, may laboratory na ang science na ang science, ang sciences. Uh, kaya, nag, ano, nag-set up na kasi kami. So, we have a lot of microscopes. Sa dami nila, hindi namin alam kung saan na ilalagay. Uh, if we have classes kasi class Lahat kayo in one class can have one microscope to handle. Ganun siya kadami ang microscope. And we have a lot to spare. Okay, so um, study the study of cells kasi class is very dependent on microscopy. Okay, we have different types of microscopes. We have the transmission type. We have the scanning type. Okay, so we have transmission ele or um, electron type. We have that uh, transmit uh, scanning electron na type SEM. So those are the types of microscope. Meron din tayo yung pinakam basic, which is the light microscope. So this one is an example of a, a light microscope. So ito yung ano ang light microscope kasi class is the most basic kaya siya ginagamit sa mga students and pinakamura din siya. Okay, uh, usually the price is, starts from 3000 to 12000 Ganon siyang prices for microscope. Although may mga teaching microscope for us na teachers that can amount to 100000 isang motor na yun. Okay, so ganun ang ano natin. So these are the parts of your microscopes. Meron tayo yung type na binocular. Meron din tayo yung isa lang ang ocular na ano na viewing na micros, uh, na, ano, na viewing lens. So, meron tayo yung isa lang. Um, this is your arm. This is where you actually yung hahawakan mo uh, one uh, ang arm and the base. Kapag hahawak ng microscope class, dalawa ang hahawakan mo. The arm and the base. Support sa base and you have the arm dito na portion. Ito sa upper na portion. Okay, we have usually meron tayong tatlong objective lens. Usually, the third one class is for the oil immersion. Um, oil immersion class is for clarity. Um, uh, the best resolution kasi for other na organisms, like mas malaki yung magnification 
is actually nasa oil immersion na, na objective lens, which is for light microscopes, it's usually 50 or 40 times. So you have a uh, multiplier kasi ang itong ob, uh, ocular lens. So ito siya ang, uh, sorry, the multiplier pala is actually the objective lens and this is your basic na view. Ito siya nandito sa ating ocular. Okay, when you see through a microscope kasi class, hindi ka, hindi ka gagamit, hindi ka magka-close ng eye like, you shut your one eye and you look on the other. Uh, okay, actually class, you just focus the eye, open both eyes. Ganun siya, open. Okay, you just watch and focus your eyes down to your object. So, ganun siya ang ating uh, ginagamit. So, we have this one year stage where you place your um, samples. Uh, we have the coarse and the fine. Usually, ang bago ngayon yung sa mga samples na nasa school class, the fine one is actually, um, hindi na siya dito na portion. Uh, yung may sample tayo na nandito na siya. And the stage is actually, may ruler na siya sa stage. Yun siya ang bago, which is, uh, hindi, walang ganyan sa amin dati. Uh, we have to move it by our own, as in manual siya ang movement sa amin. Uh, Nung high school ako, kasi I, um, I'm a psyker na student at uh, batch 2006. So, sa amin noon, imove namin talaga siya ng ganun. Kami talaga mag-move. Pero ngayon, you have a very, ano, very slight na, ano, na parang pang, ano, pang move lang ng stage para ma-move mo siya yung sample mo um, forward, backward. Ganun siya. Or left, right, ganun siya. So, ganun siya na movement. Yun ang kaya niya. Yun ang bago ngayon. And for the light source, hindi na siya yung mirror. Dati kasi, we have the mirror. Uh, unfortunately, wala na mga mirror na mga, uh, yung sa mga bago ngayon, yung binigay ng, ano, ng depth ed, hindi na yan siya mirrored. Uh, we just need, uh, ang iba kasi na, na student microscopes, they need batteries. But others would need, isaksak mo talaga siya para may light source ka. Ganun ang bago ngayon. Okay? Aside from the telescope, we have, uh, I, from a microscope, we have telescopes. Yung may bago ka, tayo na telescopes. We have actually four or five or six of them. Kalimutan ko na. Kasi ang isa lang na set up pa ni Sir Sera. Yun pala. Okay, so yun ang mga um, ano natin for the uh, microscope. There are several uh, other na parts you have there in your modules. Uh, you can um, look for that gamit ang modules ninyo. Okay, so meron at doon, punta na tayo sa ano talaga yung cell theory. Okay, the cell theory class is actually quite a bit story. Uh, medyo... Bonggang bongga siya pagkagawa. Pero actually, we have only three. Okay, shortcut tayo doon sa tatlo. So we have, all living things are actually made of cells. Okay, uh, the first uh, proponent for this one is actually nakakatawa. Hindi siya kasi na sinabi ka agad na, oh, lahat ng hayop, lahat ng tanim, merong cells. Actually, hindi ganun. One scientist and another scientist um, created their own theory separately. And the other one is only plants are made of cells. And the other one postulated that only animals are made of cells. Ganun sila, which is, nagtataka ka, bakit naisip nila ganun? Kasi nauna ang animals because they are moving. And they do not consider plants as living noong una panahon. Because they are not moving at all. Okay, so ang ibig sabihin, only animals were uh, with cells and plants do not have any cells. So, pero another, or ano kasi scientist postulated that. So, hanggang sa nagkaroon na tayo ng microscopy because naka-develop si Robert Hooke ng yung ano niya, parang paddle-like. Okay, so ganun siya ang nangyari. So, we have those na mga theories. Next one is we have we have other na postulates like cells are the smallest unit of life. Yun ang pinakamaliit na pwedeng uh, mag-function as a living organism. So yun siya ang second na postulate. And the third one is that cells can only come from other cells. Okay, dito napapasok 
yung inyong magiging task, which is the debates on the origin of life. Some scientists kasi class do not believe that cells can only come from other cells. So, we have different na mga ano, mga um, parang tinatawag nila na um, theories. So, uh, we ha they have theories that oh, uh, living organisms can only come from other living organisms. So, it's not possible for living organisms to just Yung term nila is poof into existence. You, let, you can just conjure something out of nothing. Or, um, conjuring something out of nothing is abiogenesis. A means, in English, an uh, etymology, it's without. So, in, um, it cannot come from nothing. So, abiogenesis is rejected by most na mga biologists noon. Pero sa ngayon, Dahil sa miller yuri na experiment, which is meron kayong diagram dyan sa inyong modules, they actually consider it na ngayon. So this one, the third postulate, is under debate. So cells can uh, come only from other cells. So until now, the cell theory is still standing, but they are still postulates. That means they are not considered as laws. So, you are considered a law if you have already, um, ano na, uh, you have, hindi ka na, na, ano, na, you are tested against time and you will stood it. So, until now, postulates pa sila. So, they are still, um, uh, overall, they are called as a theory. Okay? So, sino proponents ng mga ito? So, the first one is from Matthias Schleden. Okay, all living things are made of cells. So that's for Matthias Schleden. And we have Theodore Schwann. Actually, si Theodore Schwann and si Matthias Schleden, they share the postulate for all living things are made of cells. Pero si Theodore Schwann is considered for cells are the smallest unit of life. Kasi um, uh, parang ano na sila ni ano eh, parang student na sila ni Robert Hooke, parang products na sila ng, ng time ni Robert Hooke for the microscopy na age. So, um, they already considered that all living organisms have cells which are the smallest unit of life. Okay, and the third one na proponent is we have Rudolf Karl Virchow. So, si Virchow is actually very well known sa microbiology. If you are going into medicine or medicine related ng mga courses, you will be knowing all about him. So, siya yung nasa germ theory, si uh, Virchow. Okay? So, let's go to ano yung kay Virchow. Bakit sinabi niyang only cells can come from cells? Notice class that this one is a diagram about reproduction. So this is um, fertilization until um, growth and development stage. So we have only um, cells. Ang mga cells kasi para sa kanya is that hindi ka nagagawa as a cell like this one, like a zygote, an embryo, an, a baby, a whole organism. If you did not come from living organisms, kagaya ng egg and sperm. So, ang ibig sabihin, hindi ka talaga considered as a living organism kapag wala kang ganyan. Okay? So, uh, yun ang parang ano niya na point na uh, biogenesis is the only um, theory of the origin of life that is acceptable. So, doon ang, ano, do, dito na nag-start yung debate ng mga uh, about origin of life. Ang nakakagulo nito is that nang dahil kay Charles Darwin doon na nag mas lalong uh, parang naging ano ang biogenesis parang shaky na yung ground niya because of the word evolution. Okay. So let's go into bakit naging uh, parang magulo na itong third na postulate. Okay, let's start with yung sa discovery ni Robert Hooke. Actually, class, hindi si Robert Hooke ang, ang first for uh, discovery of your microscope. Hindi siya. There are other microscopes noon before him. But actually, he was the first one to actually 
write down his observations. Okay. So, yun na ang parang ang galing sa kanya. Kaya siya noted for it. It's because he wrote it down and presented it. Ganun kasi ang totoong scientist class. You write your observations down, you draw your conclusions, and you present it to others for them to critic. Okay, so, ang sa kanya is that, ang tinadihan niya is actually a cork. Okay, so, ang nakita niya is parang, um, kaya siya tinawag niya na cell. It's because it's like the rooms of the monks. Uh, they call it cells kasi noon. Kasi sa liit niya. And, meron siya mga konting-konting mga bagay na nasa loob ng isang kwarto. So, kaya niya tinawag na cell. So, the term cell actually is credited to Robert Hooke. But there's another scientist for it, which you will discover if you are going to study biology on your own. Okay, so merong another for that. So, the term cell is credited to Robert Hooke. So, ang sa kanya kasi class is that um, he was the one of the first ones na merong nag, uh, study ng microscope. So, ang ginamit niya lang class is hindi masyadong clear yung kanyang picture uh, for it. Nakikita niyo yung kanyang, ano, um, ito siya, yung kanyang um, microscope. It's too simple. But actually, um, able siya na makakita na ng something from... Uh, from the sample na kanyang tinitingnan. So, meron tayo yung term cellulay or uh, simply ang anglicized na form or English na form of the Latin na word is cell. Okay. So, we have another one, yung other niya na studies. So, these are the sperms uh, of different na organisms. He studied it. So, dahil sa uh, sperms are actually motile, or ang um, tinatawag natin na they are moving. Okay. So, kaya siya sinabi niya, oh, these cells are actually alive. Kaya, doon na. So, this one is credited, uh, the cells are actually alive. This the, That one is credited to Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Okay. So, it's not uh, Leeuwenhoek, it's actually Leeuwenhoek. Um, may pagka German kasi siya, Saxon. So, the W is um, pronounced as V. Okay, so it's Leeuwenhoek. So, Anton von uh, Leeuwenhoek. So, yan siya ang ano, credited for the term, uh, for the phrase that cells are actually alive. So, yan siya. So, another is we have yung kay Anton von Leeuwenhoek. So, it's his Dutch. So, ang kanyang ano is, yung, yung microscope niya kasi is paddle-like lang yan siya na mukha, pero it's capable of magnifying 270 times. So, dahil sa they are moving, ang nakita niya, so we call them animal cules because they are uh, uh, motile. So, parang animals daw that they, very small animals that can actually move so we call them animal cues. Uh, the cells he called them as animal cues. Okay. And the next one, uh, nasa ano natin sa cells natin is that the one that can magnify the cells um, quite larger, na maging distinct na yung kanyang nuclear na region or the nucleus na region or the nucleus mas klaro na siya. Doon kay Robert Brown. Okay, so Robert Brown na yung ano natin for this one. So, the nucleus, which is, kung sa ngayon alam natin, dyan nakalagay ang ating DNA. It's the protective na region for the DNA of the cells. Okay, so, yan siya ang um, nucleus natin. So, that's for, from Robert Brown. Credited yan siya kay Robert Brown. So, from our discussion today, plants, animals, bacteria are all made of cells. So, these are the types of cells that we have. Um, notice that they are um, different. Okay, so, ang animal cells kasi, this one is um, ciliated na type. Uh, kapag may microvilli, that means it's in the intestines. Okay, this is your plant cell which is quite rigid ang structure. Okay, uh, it's because they don't have 
internal skeletons like the animals uh, or we they have external skeletons so they have to create uh lignified na portions um you will know what is lignin kapag mag-discuss na tayo ng cells okay and we have here bacteria so bacteria that actually ha are quite um yung pinaka pathogenic at pinaka mahirap i-cure ng mga sakit those are the ones that contain capsules. They are encapsulated. Uh, sa mga fans ng, ano, ng Hatara Kusaibu or Cells at Work, uh, you will understand how powerful a capsule is. Uh, nandun yun siya sa ano yung episode. One or two. I think two. Okay, sa mga fans. Oh, episode two ata yun. Okay, so you have capsules. Uh, yun siya mga medyo powerful kasi na mga types of bacteria. But those that do not have capsules, madali lang yan silang masira when they are attacked by the um, uh, parang def defenses ng, ano, ng uh, host organism. Okay? So, these are your basic na um, uh, hindi talaga ganito yung cells ha, mukha ng cells. They are just representative na Images for that uh, cells. Okay, so let's go to, ano, um, okay, the theories, okay, this one. Okay, let's understand muna the Miller-Urey experiment. Ano yung nasa Miller-Urey? Okay, so bakit siya considered as yung pinaka-important study about life? Okay, the Miller-Urey kasi class is the one that, that proposes that life cannot come, uh, can can come from nothing. Yung parang walang 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 ano walang walang uh, walang sources. So, so it's like um, abiogenesis kasi ang main na ano nito ng Miller Urey. Meron din tayo yung isa na spontaneous generation. It's like they just poof. And na, magic. Uh, they you just conjure uh, something like um, for divine creation. Divine creation, kasi it's like spontaneous generation. Galing lang siya sa parang word of uh, divine um, creator. Meron kang creator. Then um, he just said the words, and they just poof into existence. That's spontaneous generation. An example. But for uh, meron tayo yung sa uh, you have the Miller-Urey experiment. It's a form of abiogenesis. Okay, bakit siya abiogenesis? You notice that meron tayo yung example natin. Okay, wait lang. Uh, Paki-turn on. Okay. So, meron tayo yung uh, Miller-Urey experiment. So, yung Miller-Urey kasi class is that May ano siya, um, gagawa siya ng parang building blocks of the cells, which is the amino acids, the macromolecules, from nothing. Okay, so ang nothing niya, pero may source pa rin siya sa nothing niya, kaya nga siya abiogenesis because it's non-living na things that will create a living thing. Okay, parang basis siya. So, that's the Miller Urey. And until now, wala pang nakakago beyond the um, amino acids. Ah, yan ang hinahantay, uh, inaantay ng lahat ng mga biologists ngayon. Sino ang makaproduce ng other macromolecules? So, yun siya ang ano natin. Yun yung pinaka-main na ano na pwedeng studihan ng mga future biologists. Okay. So, sa so miller Yuri is that you have, um, meron tayo yung parang primitive na ocean, uh, which is the heated water. We have, meron tayo yung areas that they can um, parang nag uh, ng condensation, which is the water vapor na collection. Meron din silang sparks that can introduce um, um, parang light energy or ang sinasabi nila is that parang uh, something na can resemble lightning. So, those are the parang primitive na atmosphere kasi 
bakit siya sinasabing primitive na atmosphere? Because the Earth is believed to be just like Venus is now. Si Venus kasi class is uh, classified as a primitive na planet because it's um, meron siyang um, very high ang kanyang carbon dioxide in the atmosphere um, and hindi uh, only volcanic eruptions lang ang parang nagbubuhay sa cycle ng isang planet. Okay? So, ang, ang ano kasi yan class dito is that once that the here yung condensed na liquid na form ito siya is actually collected na kapag na collect na siya if you um get samples and you let it sit for a while that's the time that the macromolecules are actually created so meron silang other na ano um samples like the operin model uh yung kay model ni operin so Alexander Oparin, that's the that's the cycle, uh, that's the process in which each stage mag, uh, modify ang, org, ang samples na collected until it resembles the basic building blocks of life, which is your amino acids. Okay, so yun siya ang parang ano ng abiogenesis. How, uh, is it possible if kayang gumawa from this one, the non-living um, parts into a living organism. So, ganun siya. Uh, ang tinaturn pa nila na living organism that is possible for this is yung primitive na bacteria, which is your archaea, the archaeans, uh, from the domain archaea. So, the archaeans are actually the most uh, primitive na microorganisms. Right? So let's start, go, let's go to ano yung mga biogenesis and abiogenesis na theories before tayo nagkaroon ng Miller-Urey experiment, which is from Stanford University. Bago yan siya, bakit may mga, bakit naging desperado yung mga scientists natin na mag-create ng ganyan na klase ng experiment? Bakit tayo napunta sa ganyan ng stage? Okay, we have this five, uh, this four before him, before the Miller-Urey. We have Frances, uh, Fran Francesco Reddy, we have John Needham, we have Lazaro Spallianzani, and we have Louis Pasteur. Okay, so the first one is from Francesco Reddy. See, si Francesco Reddy class, ito yung classic mong experiment na kapag may iniwan kang pagkain, tapos, ooh, bakit may magots na dito nanganak yung pagkain ng magots okay so ganun ang kanya ano dahil sa masyadong itong matanda na ano class na na theory it's big um uh his conclusion was that life rose from living matter like si magots daw is nanggaling daw kay um si magots daw is nanggaling daw sa mga flies that actually um Parang that feed on the meat. Okay, so this is the experimental setup that he did. He has um, two sets, um, two um, experimental setups. He has open jars and jars that are covered with a uh, cloth or a fine mesh. Okay, so napansin niya yung mga may open jars, yun ang nilalapitan ng flies, na nakakapasok ang flies. But for those na Merong cloth over it, so hindi sila makakapasok. So yung hindi makakapasok, yun ang nagkakaroon, yun ang walang magots. Okay, so another one is this one, wala silang nagiging, uh, this one is nagkakaroon ng magots. So notice that dito niya, ano, na he, he, um, spontaneous generation cannot be possible. So uh, ang ano kasi nila noon is that Kaya, tayo merong tatlo na mga theories, main na theories. We have spontaneous, we have spontaneous generation, we have abiogenesis, and we have the biogenesis. Okay, so ang biogenesis class, ito yun siya, kay Reddy. Uh, si Francesco Reddy kasi, sinasabi niya that life can only come from life. Living organisms itself. So hindi kayang gawing... Uh, hindi daw pwedeng mag-exist ang something out from nothing. Okay. 
So, um, yan ang kanyang experiment. Another experiment is we have a um, scientist named John Nidham. Ito na naman siya, another priest. So, ang, ang naging ano sa kanya class is that his experiment involved boiling. Okay. Dahil sa they are British, so they are very particular with gravy. Um, yung mga gravy-gravy, galing yan sa mga English na ano, okay, so mga soups. So, sa kanila, ang ano is, they used a Florence flask for this one. So, uh, they boiled it. So, kapag ma-boil mo daw and you left it open, so, um, and sealed it after or oh, after some time, um, saka siya nakasabi na, oh, pwede ang spontaneous generation. Ang problema kasi kanito, class, there is something wrong with his experiment. Saan ang wrong dito? One, two, three, four. It's actually number two. He left it open. Tandaan ha? He left it open. So, ang ibig sabihin, it's possible that the air going into the flask is actually um, already have microorganisms. So, by the time he sealed it, kinulong niya na din yung mga microorganisms with the gravy even though he boiled the gravy first. So, yun ang nagiging problem sa kanyang experiment. So, although he actually supported the spontaneous generation which is life can come from nothing, may mali sa kanyang experiment. Okay? So, doon siya nagkamali ng setup. So, this is already rejected na ngayon ang kanyang setup ni John Needham. There is something wrong with John Needham's idea, actually. Okay, the next one is we have Lazarus Palianzani. So, si Lazarus Palianzani is the same with Francesco Redi. So, he is also Italian. And ang sa kanya is parang ginawa niya na kapareho kay John Needham except that he was very thorough. Okay, so um, very thorough siya for the fact na meron siyang broth na heated, he left it open, and there is growth. So when uh, meron din naman siyang separate na experimental setup na the broth is heated, but it is sealed kaagad after heating. So walang nakakapasok kaagad. Then he wait for a while and there is no growth. So, kapag ma-open lang daw yung ano, flask, saka lang daw nagkakaroon ng growth sa loob ng flask. So, saka siya nagsabi na yung um, setup ni John Needham is actually not correct. So, there's something wrong. Siya yung parang nag-point out na uh, the scientific na process that John Needham actually did is actually not correct. So, balik na naman tayo sa biogenesis. Doon pa rin siya. Life can only come from life. Supported pa rin yung uh, postulate ni um, Virchow. So, doon pa rin siya bumalik. Uh, umikot pa rin kay Virchow. Balik ta pa rin tayo. Cells can only come from living cells. Okay. The last one is actually kay Louis Pasteur. This time class, Parang ano niya, okay, paano na nagkaroon, ano ba talaga, saan ba talaga galing yung bacteria na yun? Paano daw nagkaka, parang naspoiled yung gravy, yung gravy ni John Needham, yung broth ni um, Spallianzani? Bakit paano daw siya naging, paano daw naging ano yun, pa, paano nasira? So this time, Gumawa ng steps si Louis Pasteur. So, Louis Pasteur is actually French. Okay, kaya nga yung, pagka, ang yung pangalan niya is different, yung pagka-pronounce. Okay, so this is Louis Pasteur's experiment and it is very well-known. It's the swan neck um, experiment. Well-known yan siya sa biology world and it's still standing today. Okay, may, meron pa rin yan siyang ano, sa museum niya. Okay, sa, sa Pasteur na Institute sa Paris. Okay, so we have this one, uh, Swan Next. So he boiled it. So hindi daw kailangan na i, ano mo siya, uh, you have to put a cork 
over the flask. So, hindi daw kailangan. So, it's just that, um, yung napapansin niya is that it's actually the air that actually, that contains, air also contains living organisms. Doon parang na-prove nila that um, hindi, hindi daw possible talaga ang spontaneous generation. So, hindi daw talaga pwedeng magkaroon ng living organism out from nothing. And um, abiogenesis uh, is not just really not possible. Kaya nga naging um, parang desperate yung mga persons who do not believe in the divine creation, yung mga, um, we call them as atheists. Um, um, some of you might be. Uh, I have students who are atheists. So, ma- uh, may, may mga ano talaga na they do not uh, believe that there is a divine or a celestial being. So, doon na nagkaroon ng Miller-Urey experiment. It's because of this series of experiments from Francesco Reddy until kay um, Louis Pasteur. They have different na mga experiments and they concluded that no, except for John Needham ha, no, it's not possible. Life cannot come from nothing. Life can only come from living organisms. So doon na sila nagkakaroon ng wars about um, the origin of life. Okay? So your that's your task. Identifying saan ang iyong belief na lagay. Okay? Actually, class, you just need to point something and just uh, magwakal wakal mo sa inyong papel. Okay, that's your task. Uh, you have to explain your side. Bakit ayaw mo maniwala? Uh, anong classing experiment ang parang naka ano sa iyo na it's really true. Biogenesis is really true. Uh, biogenesis is really true. So you have to um, really understand that meron tayong mga experiments that actually disprove spontaneous generation or abiogenesis. And there are experiments like the Miller-Urey experiment, which is, um, which can actually try to prove the existence of um, living organisms from nothing, um, abiogenesis. Okay, so saan ang sa inyo? Um, from living organisms or from nothing? Or from something uh, non-living into a living organism. So, saan ang isa inyo na side? Okay, so you have to uh, read up about uh, the Miller-Urey, yung, gra- uh, yung diagram dyan na nasa inyong module, and the other experiments like Louis Pasteur's experiment, which is this one neck na theory, the germ theory. Okay, so yun ang magiging um, ano ninyo, parang point of reference. So, alin ang sa inyo? Sa, alin ang mas kapani-paniwala? Or, halimbawa, ayaw mo ng scientific na view. You just want um, um, biblical na view or you have yung sa Quran na, ano, na idea or na theory. So, saan ang sa iyo? Scientific? Or alin sa mga scientific na views ang mas acceptable? or uh, the divine creation uh, view. So, those are um, other na um, ideas about um, origin of life. Okay? So, yan lang ang sasagutan ninyo sa module 1. Nothing else. Okay? Hindi na magpapasa ng mga sangkatutak dyan na activities dahil masyado yung marami. And may iba pa kayong 8 subjects. Uh, biology is just one of your subjects. There are other eight subjects. Okay, so nine subjects kasi kayong this uh, ano, um, quarter, uh, semester. Alright? So, those are your um, ano, um, um, example. So, pwede kayo mag-explain before, uh, before pointing out your own view. You can explain the differences, similarities, and saan ang weakest point na ta- parang like sa, uh, sa kanin nyo na, na discover sa inyong sarili, I don't like their explanation and I don't like their, um, ano, uh, I don't like uh, yung kanilang 
ideas. Okay, so pwede mo kayong magsabi doon. Okay, so from Denise Okay and Juliana Nakian, you can type in your question sa ating chat box. Okay, so meron tayo yung ano, um, there are other na mga um, sites that are actually na pwedeng magsabi na bacteria are the true original life forms on earth. So that's a scientific na view. Um, you can actually read up on that para ma, parang mas mas maintindihan nyo kung paano kayo mag-build up ng inyong um, arguments. Okay, so para mas marami kayong maisulat na ideas. Okay, so you can read up using that one. Alright, so let's go to parts of the cell. Introduction muna tayo. So sa kay Stanley Miller and Harold Uris, so na experiment, um, the answer for this one is that let, it's letter B. Under some conditions, amino acids can actually assemble spontaneously. So, um, hindi actually, hindi siya nag-prove about the age of the earth. It's not about the um, necessity of oxygen as for living organisms. And it's not about uh, the DNA versus RNA na mga ano, na, na parang ano, basis of Ano ba talaga yung genetic material for the cells? Okay? So, hindi yun siya about that. So, it's letter P. Okay. Another one is that, ano yung mga organelles na nasa loob ng cell? So, meron tayo yung ano, membrane-bound and non-membrane-bound. Okay? For your second module, these are, uh, may ano dyan siya, meron kayong activity dyan which is to, differentiate and uh, find differences and find the similarities okay so meron din kayo dyan identifying the parts of your cells okay so these are the membranous and non-membranous meron lang tayong tatlong non-membranous na cells the cells that actually do not contain uh ang pag sinabi mong membrane class it's the phospholipid na layer okay so, yun siya. Kapag hindi siya made up of the phospholipid layer, that means it's non-membranous. It's made up uh, primarily of proteins. So, kapag hindi siya, uh, kapag sinabi mo kasing phospholipid layer, it's phospholip, uh, phospholipid, uh, phosphates as the head and the lipid as the tails. So, hindi yan siya uh, the, the membrane na part. So, that's your protein. So, we have plain protein, your ribosomes the protein factory um sa genetic siyensya na lesson we have centrioles centrioles are actually what we use for they are made of, uh, up of microtubules so they we use them for cell division um mas ano sila mas nakikita mo sila late prophase and into metaphase and nawawala sila kon uh, start they start to diminish sa end of anaphase. Okay. So, we have also the cytoskeleton. Uh, cytoskeleton is made up of microfilaments. Okay. So, cytoskeleton is, kung meron tayong skeleton, backbone, uh, the cells also have their own, especially sa ating um, animal cells. Animal cells need cytoskeleton's class. Okay. So, yun lang ang sa kanila. Um, okay, kay Kian pala, sorry. Uh, yung sasagutan lang sa uh, module 1 is about debates on origin of life. Yun lang. You just have to answer that one. Nothing else sa module 1. Okay? Um, debates on origin of life. Yan lang kasi ang walang sagot sa entire na module. If you check the answer key, lahat may sagot except for that one. Okay? So, yun, kung walang sagot, that means yun lang ang sasagutan. The debates on origin of life. Kaya siya may clarifying na um, rubrics kasi yun ang magiging basis ko sa scoring pag mag-check. Alright? Okay, so let's go to um, other na parts of the cell. So, these are the main na parts. Ito yung sinasabi ko class na membrane. 
the plasma membrane. We'll be discussing this further later on sa quarter one. So this is the plasma membrane. These are proteins actually in the plasma membrane. So these are integral proteins. We call them integral. Meron din tayo yung mga um, extracellular and mga um, may other types pa na talaga ng ano, protein. So, we will be discussing them further. Another is we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, rough ER is um, littered with, uh, punctuated with your ribosomes. So, these are the parts of the cell that actually um, do the, yung ano parang transcription of your um, proteins. Uh, dito na nangyayari ang transcription para makagawa ng proteins. Okay, we have also the Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus class is like the distribution and packaging center of the cell. Um, we will differentiate them um, later. Introduction pa lang ito ngayon. We have the mitochondrion, uh, yung ano natin, energy processing na organelle. We have the smooth. Uh, si smooth naman class is before it is packaged, uh, yung packaging kasi ng, uh, ng Golgi apparatus is actually siya yung parang packaging para makapagpadala sa outside or kapag magre-receive si cell, siya yung parang nag, ano, nag-screen out uh, si Golgi apparatus niyan ang nagre-receive. Tapos saka siya magsasabi, ah, saan pala tao galing? Parang siya yung parang mail mailing the distribution center ng cell. So, si Golgi apparatus yan siya. Si smooth naman class is, ano yung products ni rough endoplasmic reticulum? Siya yung parang um, initial na packaging center. Siya yung uh, parang nagde-determine saan, saan to siya ipapapunta. Pero ang final na packaging, na repackaging, is uh, parang commercial na packaging na center is si Golgi apparatus. Okay, then we have your lysosome. Uh, the lysosome is only found in animal cells. Lysosomes are very important because they contain um, digestive enzymes. Kinagamit din sila ng cell for apoptosis. Uh, kapag nagpapakamatay, may nagsuicide ha ang cell. Uh, these are the suicide bags of the cell. Um, uh, Kapag nagpapakamatay si cell, especially if the DNA is compromised, um, si DNA kasi class, kaya tayo may nucleus because it's the most guarded secret of the cell. Uh, kung meron kang uh, pinatagong lihim, si cell meron din. Okay, siya yung pinaka, uh, parang scarlet letter niya. Okay, so the si DNA is well protected. So if it is compromised, especially if there are biohackers like your uh, viruses or there is an infection like your bacteria. Uh, we, the cell actually uses the lysosome to counter at, uh, for kapag ano na, pag, uh, kapag wala na talagang hope when all else fails na lahat. Uh, kapag lahat na ng mga ano na ginagawa niya is wala na talagang nangyari. So si lysosome ang last. Okay, see, kaya siya present in animal cells kasi si animal cell is very susceptible and it can burst. Kaya siya, si lysosome is present in animal cells. And we have your nucleus. So, si nucleus class uh, is, mer uh, meron pa yan siyang yung portion na kung saan very distinct ang um, region ng DNA material. Uh, kapag Ang region for DNA material inside the nucleus is what we call as the nucleolus. Kasi it's protect, well protected then inside. And the fluid that actually is nasa loob ng isang cell, whether it's inside the nucleolus or in, uh, inside the nucleus or the outside of the nucleus, it's called the cytosol. That's the fluid of the cell, cytosol. Meron pa tayong other hand, mga parts of the cell. Okay, this is for the plant cell. Notice that only plant cells have very large vacuoles. Um, mayroon din si animal cell na vacuoles, like this one. This is actually a vacuole. This is another vacuole. But it's also always used only for um, separation of mga laman niya. Mga parang waste materials lang. Pero sa kay plant cells class, 
ginagamit niya kasi si central vacuole as depository for water. Uh, Diyan nilalagay si tubig, especially if it's rainy season or if it, it's the drought na season, that's where water is stored. And waste materials are also stored there kasi they have to up up the concentration gradient para maka-attract ng water. Uh, we'll discuss that further later sa quarter one para sa ating diffusion and osmosis, concentration gradients. Okay, so meron tayong central vacuole. Okay, so, so mas prominent ang vacuoles in plants than in animal cells. Okay, so sa I plant naman class, we have the uh, the most identifying na uh, ano, it's a plant or it's uh it's capable of photosynthesis if it has a chloroplast. Okay. Um my ano tayo, my organisms tayo like some bacteria, meron tayong cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria class has a um has a photosynthesis processing na an organelle. It's the same that with your chloroplasts. So they are believed to be um the first uh life uh, the first life forms that are capable of producing oxygen. Um, if you are going to study about the origin of life uh, in sa internet, makikita ninyo ang pangalang cyanobacteria. Um, it's because they are credited as the first organisms na nagproduce ng large amounts of oxygen which diffuse the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Na ang ending is halos lahat na ng organisms after that one is capable na producing oxygen kasi they have to live with this one. May population explosion kasi daw nangyari after some time that they started producing oxygen. So they were the first ones and uh, parang sila yung first na organisms credited to use sunlight as uh, uh, converting chemical energy uh, light energy into chemical energy. Ganon. So, um, yun siya, cyanobacteria. So, ngayon, ang ano is, we have the endosymbiotic theory. Okay, bakit nagkaroon daw ng my uh, mitochondria and chloroplast ang, ano, ang mga, mga animals and plants? It's actually of because of the endosymbiotic na theory. There are life forms, originally, wala yan sa kanila, Pero dahil sa beneficial, um, they started ingesting them and they started housing them inside. Kaya nga si chloroplast class, um, actually si DNA class is not just found in the nucleus. Pwede mo din silang makita sa chloroplast and sa mitochondrion. Yan ang tatandaan ninyo ha. Hindi lang sa nucleus mo makikita ang DNA na material. Nandun din sa chloroplast and sa inyong, um, inyong mitochondrion. Meron din silang sariling DNA. Okay? So, these are your parts of your, um, yung general na parts of a plant na cell. Okay? So, si mitochondria and your chloroplast, they use it for, to encode some of their own proteins. May proteins kasi yan sila which we will discuss on quarter do. Okay, so look for the term endosymbiosis when you type it in. Okay, so you can actually try to um, read up about the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. Um, we have some samples of the prokaryotes. Um, remember how prokaryotes are your bacteria and archaea. Your eukaryotes are from your domain eukarya. You have the protist or the protoctist. We have the plants, fungi, and your animals. Okay, so those are examples. This is a bacteria which is, meron kang in, uh, capsule. So most bacteria kasi class have a flagellum. Kapag isa, flagellum, flagella if marami. This is um, pili. Okay, so a pili is actually um, quite larger than a cilia. And cilia is larger than a microvilli. Okay, so... Pila is bigger um, uh, than a cilia. 
And ang sa kanila naman class, the proteins are actually, meron silang ribosomes din. And bacteria are actually, hindi lahat ng mga ano, um, drawings for bacteria has um, mitochondria. Um, they have a different na ano, different na energy processing center, pero they also have um, mitochondria. Okay? So, pero meron silang region actually where they can process their energy. It's actually in their, um, this one, membrane. They are also made up of phospholipid na layer. So, you will, we will notice them later sa module 2. Okay, so which is next week. Okay, so ito na siya, ang ating bacterial cells. So, they, uh, the, their DNA class is quite different than human, uh, than uh, eukaryotes. Ang eukaryotes kasi class, meron tayong parang XX yan siya, pakapag mag-undergo na ng cell division, parang X na yan siya. But for them, it's circular they have circular DNA. Kaya nga yung um, Janssen natin, uh, I think Janssen, yeah. Janssen um, is actually a vector. Ang vector niya is actually a microorganism similar to a bacteria. Ginamit nila is the circular DNA to transfer the coding material para mag, ano, ng, ng, ng coding, uh, um, code para mag, uh, gawa ng mga spike proteins para maka, ano nang, nang parang uh, maka-trigger ng immune system. So, it's the same sa Janssen na uh, vaccine. Okay, so, ang ginamit nila is a vector. A vector is usually a microorganism like bacteria. Okay? So, we will discuss them further pag abot na to quarter four. All right. So, this is your um, plant cell. Uh, notice for a plant cell class, it's always rigid. Um, we will be discussing ano yung parts of a cell wall. Bakit siya ganyan ang mukha? Meron yan siyang parts kasi class. Uh, bawat isa sa kanila. And ano yung use ng plasmodesmata? We will be discussing them next week. Okay? So... Right. So those are our um ano natin ngayon na araw. So um any questions? Um ito pala. These are the viruses. So we have different na viruses. Your influenza virus class and your HIV, um, they are almost the same as your um, coronaviruses. Ang coronaviruses kasi class is uh, a different class of their own. Uh, your influenza virus is an example of a rhinovirus. So, meron tayong rhinoviruses. So, uh, meron tayo yung bacteriophage. Uh, T4 bacteriophage is actually ang kinakain niya lang class or they uh, use as a host are bacteria. So, sila yung destroyer of bacteria. Okay? So, these are examples of our viruses. Kaya nga, we cannot classify them as living organisms because kapag anjan lang sila on their own, they are not living. Uh, hindi sila nabubuhay. Parang they just hibernate. And they only have a protein capsule. Uh, we call it a capsid. And they have this region for their DNA or RNA. Ang pinakamahirap kasi class na type of viruses that uh, we can make vaccines for are the RNA type. Uh, the RNA type kasi is parang reverse uh, transcription ang ginagamit natin. Like the... Uh, HIV. So, ang ginagamit natin against this one is reverse transcription ng mga medicines, uh, re like reverse transcriptase na enzymes. Okay. So, kaya siya mahirap siya i-cure. Okay. So, uh, hanggang ngayon, wala pa tayong talagang cure. Although, we have a uh, parang vaccine daw uh, ngayon uh, for this one, uh, which is still in trial. Uh, pero, already, tinetest na siya ngayon. Pero sa 
ang paborito nilang testing ground kasi class is uh, Africa. Ewan bakit. Okay. So, yan siya ang, ang ating ano, uh, about viruses. So, if you want to know more about viruses, um, it's a different and na branch of biology. Uh, hindi din siya clear as if it's under biology, although it's under microbiology. Okay? So, ang viruses. Alright, so, um, you, if you have questions, please raise them up. So, ito yung mga differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes in the bacteria. Um, if you have time to, ano, to read up on this one, you can read up. Ito yung ano natin ng uh, class natin today. Uh, summary ng ating class today. The differences between the two of them. Okay, so you just need to um, differentiate. Uh, ano yung, yung task ninyo ngayon is just to um, put up your views uh, on the debates on of the origin of life. Okay, bakit, bakit ayaw mo sa biogenesis? Bakit ayaw mo ng scientific na view? Bakit ayaw mo ng divine creation na view? Uh, so, you have to question yourself, alin ang okay sa iyo? Alin ang acceptable sa iyo? And you have to relate it to the topics that we have discussed today. Okay? So, yun ang ating uh, um, activity for this module. And wala nang ibang ipapasa, yun lang. Okay, so regarding um, announcements, okay, let's go to this one. The last na, ano, slide. Okay, wait lang. All right, this one. Wait lang. Bakit ay bakit siya sirap? Okay, ganyan talaga siya. All right, if you have um ano uh, tomorrow kasi we will have orientation for all STEM. Um kasi ang ibang strands naka ano na sila ng orientation, ang STEM na lang ang wala pa. So, ang STEM is September 16, which is tomorrow, Thursday. So, 8 to 9 a.m. tayo. Your parents will be at 1 to 2 p.m. So, yan ang sa inyong parents. Please make sure that you can attend this one. Kasi, although mag, uh, magre-record pa rin kasi kami. So, ako, ako kasi yung organizer nito. So, ang ano natin is that meron tayo copy later na i-upload ko din. The same as this one, I will be uploading this one sa YouTube channel na for for this subject. Okay? So, ang sa orientation natin, uh, meron tayo yung sa parents, separate ang sa parents, separate din sa inyo na students. So, only 100 is um, ano, first come, first serve na lang ang makapasok. Okay? So, paunahay na lang sa Alright? So, yun lang siya ang ano natin. Problema kasi hindi tayo maka, ano, makasabay-sabay lahat. Okay. Um, any questions, please type them up uh, sa ating ano, chat box. Okay. Para sa ating attendance, let's have picture taking muna tayo. Okay, very slow ang internet ngayon. Okay, please turn on your camera para sa ating ano, attendance. Wait lang. I just have to turn this off. Okay, para sa meeting code para tomorrow, you just type in OTC space DGMD space SMI. Yun ang magiging meeting code tomorrow. Sa 8 a.m. pa rin. 8 a.m. pa rin the same time. So, so for your parents, is it's 1 to 2. So, hindi naman lahat ng parents are actually, um, ano talaga, kailangan talaga mag-watch. Pero kung if they have any further questions, they can attend the orientation para they can raise them. Um, after the orientation. Okay? So, yun ang ano namin, uh, goal namin 
tomorrow. And magpapakilala lahat ng subject teachers, including the ones na you haven't met yet, sa tomorrow na ano natin, um, lesson natin. Ah, uh, ano, sorry, lesson. Uh, meeting, which is the orientation. Alright, so we'll have, uh, ano muna? I'll just close this one up. Para mag... Okay. Alright. So, let's have a one, two, three. Okay. We have a one, two, three smile. Okay. Alright. Okay. Done, done, class. So, I'll see you again next ano, uh, meeting, which is next week. Although na tomorrow meron may uh, andun pa rin ako kasi ako ang mag-organize noon. Ako mag-open. So, you will have to um, ask your parents if they can attend. So, one hour only na introduction of your teachers including ano yung subjects nila, ano yung requirement para iisa na lang siya. And I will be uploading all the materials after that doon pa rin sa Google Classroom. Lahat ng mga ano including the videos, anything na related sa lesson natin or any meetups, special na lectures for um, students na mag-go into medicine. Okay, so do, uh, doon pa rin siya. Okay? Uh, may questions pa ba ang iba? Meron pa ba? May, ano pa, may tanong pa ba? Okay, if you don't have any questions, if you are ready for your module 1, then you can start your module one na activity okay so um for clarifications you can contact me anytime seven to five oh kasi mat matutulog din ako class ha kasi may may nagme message may, may nagme message pa na until ano mga 10 o'clock matutulog pa rin ako okay so we'll see each other next week okay so um, if you are not ano, um, able na maka-attend, you can go through sa YouTube na lang natin na channel. Anytime naman yun siya. Kasi I'll up be uploading this one kaagad-agad doon. Alright? So, I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye, class! Okay, bye-bye! Bye, ma'am! Bye, ma'am! Bye, ma'am! Thank you, ma'am! Bye, ma'am! Bye, ma'am. Bye. Bye, ma'am. 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 Bye, ma